you need a statement of work immediately if this has ever been you. <laughs> Hello, random client. Yes, we can do that work. We'll talk about money and non-creative details later. We'll start right away. No contract needed. I trust you, random client. I'm Raphael and welcome to the channel where our goal is to always fix it in camera and then finesse it in post. And I always appreciate the early thumbs up because a statement of work is a great business tool. It builds positive rapport and trust with quality clients, it weeds out the shady clients, and it saves your butt when the inevitable change requests come down the line on any given project. From my experience, the statement of work or the SOW is probably the most critical document you can use to start off any project but that's only if it exists and it's done right. So just a little disclaimer, you should seek out legal advice from a lawyer in your area to make sure that you set up a statement of work that is proper for your industry and location. But if a project is handed to you and there's nothing but some notes on a piece of paper, my recommendation is to stop, refuse to move forward and request that a formal state of work be created or create one that outlines the details and responsibilities of both parties. So what is a statement of work or SOW? Generally, a statement of work is a contract between one party's offer to do something in exchange for something else of value that is accepted by the other party. Most commonly, statements of work involve the exchange of promises. Say, I promise to paint your house and you promise to pay me $200. The terms of the statement of work are usually the who, what, where, when, and how of the entire agreement. They define the promises that each party has made to the other. A statement of work should serve as the blueprint for a project with clear terms and agreements outlined, including what services and deliverables will be provided, timeline for completion, estimated costs, and expectations for the client. The important meaning of the doc is to share what the project entails with people who are working on it, whether they're collaborating or contracted to work on the project. It's about vendors and contractors. Another key characteristic of the statement of work is that a court will enforce its terms if one of the parties breaches the contract. For example, if one of the parties fails to carry out their side of the promise. When creating a statement of work, don't be sneaky. Be honest and realistic about what you and your company can and will do and what the client can expect for the price quoted. Make sure that your statement of work has the general statement of the project purpose or need, the scope of the work, description of the major project deliverables, definition of the project milestones, estimation of the project effort, estimation of the project timeline, estimation or actual project budgets for all the different aspects of the project, a payment schedule like deposits or midpoint installments, and the final delivery payment, a high level description of the project team roles and responsibilities for both sides, and also assumptions for the project, both for your team and the client company. But when creating the statement of work, Focus on the objectives and the deliverables, but leave some flexibility when it comes to the process. It's often better not to explicitly define the process of the work that you will do in too much detail. This can lead to unnecessary work for you, unneeded costs for the client, and can actually hamper the flexibility that would best serve you and your client. In most of the statements of work that I use, I also include a professional services agreement. This can cover the process, the services provided, and the price payments in more detail. For instance, what happens when the scope of the project changes, how the overages and the extra revisions are handled, how late payments will be handled, what happens when the project exceeds the completion date by the client delaying feedback or assets to you, and also how long the contract is valid for. This is to ensure that the client doesn't come back to you a year demanding that you honor your price from the year before. It'll also cover who owns the intellectual property of the project, who owns the raw footage, the project files, how you can use the finished project to promote your services in the future. It may also include NDAs or confidentiality agreements. This helps the client know that you won't talk about that particular project or share any of the company secrets that you may gain while working on the project. And a typical statement of work will also have two more things. Any liability for acts of God events that are completely out of your control that may impact the delivery of a project and a termination clause how and when the contract can be terminated and what the fees are associated with that. Depending on how much work you've done or how long you've been on the project, what that may mean for the client. So I know that many people that are starting out don't really have a statement of work. So I get asked a lot if an email will do 
in place of a statement of work. Now, at the bare minimum, maybe, it really depends on where you are and located and what your local laws are. So definitely speak to a contract lawyer that is familiar with your industry in your location or country. It's really good to have something that you and your client can look back that is signed and agreed upon. This is what builds confidence to great working relationships. So another question is, does this replace a verbal agreement? No, a statement of work should provide a written outline of all expectations but you should always have a transparent conversation with the client to ensure that both of you are on the same page. It is really important to supplement the statement of work with a discussion over all the expectations. While it is the client's job to read over the statement of work and make sure that they understand the document before they sign it. But the verbal component adds a personal touch from you that makes the client feel more involved in the process. Starting off a project with a written and verbal statement of work sets the tone with an open line of communication, which will ultimately lead to more successful and fun projects. How do you talk about it? How do you bring it up? This is actually an easy one. After your initial discussions, let the client know that you will send them the project details, the estimated schedule, the estimated budget, and all the deliverables you will provide and everything that is needed from the client. And when you send it, ask them to look over it thoroughly and when they are ready to sign it and send it back to you. And the higher the budgets, the more important these kinds of statements of work will be. And the more time the client will need to review it, more than likely with their lawyers. So expect them to send it back with their markups and their own requirements. And if this happens, make sure that you have your lawyer look at it. So how do you make sure that it is valid in your area? This is something that requires a bit of investment from you. Talk to a contract lawyer in your area and have them look over the statement of work to make sure that it lines up with your local laws. Every place is a little different, but generally a statement of work is, again, one party agreeing to provide something, typically money, to another in exchange for goods or services. So how do you handle a breach of contract? Again, I'm not a lawyer, but first assess if the inaction of the offender causes a loss of money or some kind of economic impact on your business. Contact the breaching party immediately and request full compliance with the contract. Give them about two weeks. If no action is taken, then consult a lawyer for your next course of action. So another question I get typically is, how big or small a project needs to be to warrant a statement of work? And unnecessary luxury, if you will. My answer here is actually no. There's only a few instances where I won't require a full statement of work. If it's an ongoing long-term contract, or if I worked with a client on three or more projects. But even still, in these cases, I will still do a simple outline of the assumptions for the project, the schedule, the budget, and get them to respond to an email with accepted. But if you're looking to have something more than just an email to send to a client, you can get the statement of work that I've been using and tweaking for the past decade. The link is in the description. This is a great starting point and it's mostly focused on video services, but can be easily tweaked to suit most creative industries and your needs. I highly recommend having a lawyer create one for you that best suits your needs and business. But this template is there if you want it. It's a general statement of work that covers all things that I went over in this video. The budgets, the schedules, the roles and responsibilities, the assumptions, and the professional services agreement. So make sure you have a detailed statement of work to help you know what is and isn't part of the project. It's the key to set up every project right and get paid for all the work that you do. If you found this video helpful, make sure you check out this video where I talk about the three simple words that consistently make me an extra $15,000 a year or save me huge amounts of time. Also, I live stream on my second channel, so make sure you check it out. As always, thanks for watching.